Hello everyone and welcome to Maytech. Today we're going to look at some free and easy CNC projects. There should be some fun stuff in here for both beginners and experts alike. Before we get into it, please make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you can stay updated on all my newest releases. Okay, let's jump into this. In order to open up the files for this video, you'll need to install Carbine Create. Carbine Create is a free CNC design software provided by Carbine 3D. Just go to the URL in the description below and download and install it. It's a fairly simple program, so those of you who haven't used it before should not have much of a learning curve figuring out how it works. After you have Carbine Create installed, head on over to cutrocket.com. Cutrocket is a file sharing site for CNC projects that are made either in Carbine 3D or Fusion 360. Now this site does not have a ton of projects, but it is fairly new and does seem to be slowly growing. So make sure you have a look around. I've found some interesting stuff here too, so it's definitely worth exploring. All the original files for the projects in this video will be downloaded for cutrocket.com. I'll also be providing my files for download in the description below, as I've made some changes to these files like material thickness and material type. The first project we're gonna look at is this passive phone speaker slash phone stand. The specific URL for this file will be in the description box below. As you can see, if you scroll down, CutRocket does provide a preview of the project. It also provides a preview of the material used and the feeds and speeds. Simply click make this project and go ahead and download the file for the project. Or alternatively, you can use my file that I've also provided for download. Once you've downloaded the project, go ahead and open it up in Carbine 3D. It should look something similar to this. You'll then want to go over to your settings window and change your width and height and also your stock thickness to whatever wood you're using. Also make sure to go ahead and change any other settings that need to be changed for your machine, like your toolpath zero, material type, or machine model. Now you can go over to the toolpaths and you'll see that there's three toolpaths for this project. One path will cut out the hole for the phone. The next path will cut out the pocket for the speaker. And the last path will be the outline that cuts out the actual speaker from your material. This last path will have some tabs that will secure your project to the material, so you'll need to cut them out after the fact. You'll of course need to go through these paths and adjust the material thickness and feeds and speeds to whatever material you're using. If you're not sure about your feeds and speeds, there are some defaults that are built in for both softwood and hardwoods. These defaults tend to be fairly conservative, so they should be good to get you started until you tune in your own. Once you're done, go ahead and hit the show simulation button to get a preview of what your project's gonna look like. For my projects, I'll be using a three quarter inch white wood panel. I picked these up at my local Home Depot. I'm not exactly sure what type of wood it is, but it does say it's from Brazil on the tag. Whatever type of wood it is, I definitely like using it for testing out projects as it cuts clean. It's fairly soft, so you can move at a fairly quick feed rate, and it also accepts stain really well. I'll also be using this one inch wormy maple. This is just maple that has been attacked by bugs, which kind of gives it this spalting effect in it. Now to cut my project out, I'll be using this dual flute down cut quarter inch bit. This particular bit I'm using is from Freud. It's a fairly affordable bit and gives you a clean cut. Once you've set up your project for the material you're gonna use, go ahead and export the G-code and load it into whatever control software you're planning to use for your CNC machine. And let's go ahead and cut this project out. All right, now that my project's been cut out, I'm gonna go ahead and sand it down. I'm gonna be using my detail sander and a finger sander, both loaded with pads that have 240 grit sandpaper on them. To get into any areas that I can't reach with my mechanical sanders, I'll be using this little sanding stick. Of course, if you don't have any detail sanders, you can just go ahead and use a sanding pad to sand your project all down by hand. Now this passive speaker is obviously in two parts, so you're gonna have to glue it together. You can go ahead and use whatever wood glue is your favorite. I'm gonna use CA glue simply because of the quick setup time, and I'm gonna use an activator with the CA glue to make the drying time go even faster. Mm -hmm. 
Now once your glue is dried, you're going to want to go ahead and sand your sides again to make sure the two parts are uniform and level. After my CA glue has all dried, I'm going to go ahead and apply some salmon water-based stain to some of my passive speakers. I'm going to be applying the stain with a sponge and wiping off with a rag. I've found that this particular stain dries pretty quick, especially in my environment, so you do have to work pretty quick when you're applying it. After the stain is applied, I'm going to let these sit on my drying rack until they're completely dry and then I'm going to come back and apply my finish. To finish my projects, I'm going to use this Osmo oil. This particular oil has a product number of 3043. This is a hardening oil that Colin from Woodwork Web turned me on to. I've found that it does a good job of popping the grain while also protecting your wood. It's not a cheap product but a little bit does go a long way. It's a simple wipe on, wipe off application for the oil and I'll be using a rag for that. I'll also be giving all my projects two coats. So once I'm done applying this Osmo oil to the projects, I'm gonna let them dry overnight. In the morning, I'm gonna apply one more coat and when that's dry, I'll be back to show you the finished product. So here's the finished speakers. These speakers are a great beginner project, and they also make a great little gift for your friends and family. I really like the way the combination of Osmo oil and stain pop the grain on this. The maple actually turned out really nice too. It's hard to see in the video here, but it does have a nice figurative effect that the Osmo oil gave it. Hopefully these project rotations will at least give you an idea of how these things look in real life. The next project we're going to look at are these fun little phone stands. Just like before, the link to download this project from Cut Rocket or to download my version of this project will be in the description box below. Once you open up your project in Carbine Create, you'll get something that looks like this. Go ahead and open the settings area and change the settings to whatever material you'll be using. I've set mine up for a six millimeter or quarter inch plywood. Over in the toolpath area here, you'll have two paths. First path will be for a logo. I'll be using my company logo and I'll be cutting that with a V-bit. I believe the original uses a 1 8 bit both to engrave the logo and to cut out the project. You can of course change this to whatever logo you want or design you want or not use it at all. The next tool path is for the cutout of the project. You'll of course have to change the feeds and speeds here for whatever material you'll be using for your project. You can of course use the built-in defaults if you're not sure what to use. Once you're done, hit the simulate button and go ahead and view your project. For my phone stands, I'll be using the 6mm maple veneer plywood. I picked this up at my local box store for relatively cheap. To cut the plywood out, I'll be using this 1 8 down cut bit and I'll be using a 1 8 30 degree V-bit to engrave my logo. Let's go ahead and run these projects and see what we get. Here's what the projects look like after I'm done cutting them out. If you set up the gaps and material right in your projects, they should slide together just like so. Now I'm gonna go ahead and clean mine up using a 220 grit sanding sponge. And I'll also use a 220 grit sanding stick to get into the slot. After I'm done sanding my projects, I'm going to go ahead and stain some of them using some of the Sandman water-based stains. As usual, I'll be applying the stain with a sponge and quickly wiping it off with a rag. Once I'm done staining my projects, I'm going to set them off to the side like so to dry. Once they're dry, I'll be back to show you how I'm going to finish them. Once again, I'll be using this Osbo 3043. I'll be using a rag for a wipe on, wipe off application. 
I'll be applying two coats and letting it dry overnight between the coats. So here are my finished phone stands. You should be able to slide the two pieces together and get a friction fit between them so you don't need any glue. If your joints are too loose, a simple drop of CA glue should be all you need to hold the two pieces together permanently. As you can see, by staining these phone stands and engraving a logo on them, you can kind of customize them to any look you want. Last but not least, I'm going to give this plywood wobble board project a try. Like before, links to download this project will be in the description box below. Go ahead and open up your file in Carbine Create. Like always, you'll want to go into the settings area and change the settings to whatever you require. Just a note that the original project is set up for 3 quarter inch plywood, where mine has been downscaled to 5 8 plywood, because that was the plywood I had on hand already. In the toolpath area, you'll see three toolpaths for this project. The first will be an engraving for the feet. The second will be a cutout for the slots. And the third will be an actual cutout of the project itself, with tabs. You'll of course have to go change these tool paths to the material you're using and to the bit you'll be using. If you're unsure if your feed is in speeds, just go ahead and use the defaults that Carbine Create provides for you. Once you're done, go ahead and simulate your project and make sure everything looks good. For my projects, I'll be using some 5 8 construction grade plywood. I'm using this simply because I already had it on hand, so it seemed like a good way to use some of it up. To cut this project out, I'll be using a two flute down cut end mill that is made by Freud. Now that I have everything set up, I'm going to go ahead and cut this project out. Once I'm done cutting my project, I'm going to go ahead and sand the whole project down using 220 grit on my orbital sander. I'll also be using my Dremo tool with a little fine grit drum bit attachment to get into any of these slots or other areas that I can't reach with the orbital sander. After we're done sanding, we're going to need to go ahead and glue the rocker pieces onto the board. I'm going to be using some regular wood glue for this inside the slots. I'll also be using some CA glue with activator along the length of the rockers. The CA glue will not only help glue the rocker to the board, but because it quick dries with the use of the activator, it actually works as a clamp to hold the rocker into place while the regular wood glue dries. This allows you not to have to use any mechanical clamps. This is another little tip I picked up from Colin at Woodwork Web. After my rockers are all glued up, I'm going to let them sit overnight to let the glue dry. Once everything is dry, you'll want to go ahead and sand the surface of your board once again and sand off any glue drippings that might be there, which I've already done. To finish my project off, I'm going to use some teak oil I had kicking around. Teak oil is fairly hard wearing and weather resistant, so I figured it'd be a good choice for a project like this that could potentially get a lot of use. I'll be applying the teak oil with a sponge and wiping off any excess with a rag. I'll do this twice, letting the first coat dry overnight before applying the second one. Once this teak oil finish has dried, I'll be back to show you the finished wobble board. So here you got the finished wobble board. I did give this thing a quick try and it seems to work as intended. Although I'm too much of an old fart to get much enjoyment out of this, I'll be gifting this to a friend for his kids, so hopefully they'll get lots of use out of it. So there you go everyone, three quick, easy and free CNC projects. If you like this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments section below. Also please make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and hit that notification bell, as I'll have more CNC projects to come in the future. Thanks everyone.